the well-wishers. This is BBC News with the latest headlines. Crowds gather at Buckingham Palace and the Mall after Charles III is formally proclaimed King. The King swore an oath and paid tribute to the late Queen at his accession ceremony in St James's Palace, televised for the first time. God save the King! God save the King! The King announces a bank holiday across the UK for the day of the Queen's funeral. And senior members of the royal family greet crowds and view floral tributes at Balmoral after attending a private church service. Charles III has been proclaimed king in a ceremony at St James's Palace in front of hundreds of members of the Privy Council. In a traditional ceremony, but one which was televised for the first time, the new Lord President, the Conservative MP Penny Mordaunt, confirmed the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II before the new monarch swore an oath. Let me turn now to Buckingham Palace and to my colleague Rebecca Jones. Yes, good afternoon from Buckingham Palace where the new King, King Charles III, is inside. He returned from that meeting of the Accession Council at St James's Palace at about half past twelve. In the last few minutes, we have seen the departure from the palace of Camilla, the Queen Consort. Uh, we did wonder, perhaps, whether the new king might come out and greet the sizeable crowds uh, that are still here. There was a flurry of activity with various police officers uh, moving into position. The gates were opened. I've no doubt at all that the huge crowds that are here uh, would love him to come out and see them and uh, do a, a, a sort of impromptu walkabout, much like he did yesterday, where he greeted people here. He heard about their sorrow about the death of the Queen, but was also warm welcomed as the new king. He has had a busy afternoon inside uh, Buckingham Palace. He's been meeting religious leaders, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Dean of Westminster. We know, of course, that the funeral of the Queen will be held at Westminster Abbey. Most of that will have been planned in advance, but who knows, there may be some details that need to be ironed out and, and he's been meeting those religious leaders. Also having political meetings as well with members uh, of the cabinet and also opposition party leaders have been coming to Buckingham Palace as well. Well I'm joined here at Buckingham Palace by our home editor Mark Easton and our political editor Chris Mason. And Chris, if we perhaps start with you because I was mentioning those political meetings first of all, uh, it'll be very different, won't it? Because as Prince Charles, he will have met and known many of these politicians, but this time, he's meeting them as king. Yeah, and I think what we see at a moment like this is exposure to sunlight, if you like, of the British Constitution in its complexity and in some of the bizarre elements of it between uh, the monarchy and Parliament, between uh, what's been described in the past by uh, Sir Walter Badger.